know what? I think it's about time we made another video. I mean, it's been what, like a month, two months since our last? What, what's that? Nine months? Oh. Well, you know what? We're here now and it's gonna be a good one. Uh, we're making a BattleBot. Now, it's not gonna be a full 250 pound BattleBot as seen on TV, but we are competing in an event called Robo Ruckus, sponsored by Maker Faire here in Orlando. Uh, so if you wanna see this thing compete live, uh, come check us out in November. We'll have our regular Maker Faire booth as well. So uh, details in the description. But before we get into this, um, let's, uh, let's have a word from our sponsor. Go ahead and roll the sponsorship clip. We don't have a sponsor. Oh, that's right. <laughs> this video is sponsored by us, uh, or more specifically, Flux Engineering, uh, this place that I'm in right now, and Project Alpha. So if, uh, if you weren't lucky enough to get in on the Kickstarter on one of these knives, they are available on Amazon now. So there's a link in the description for that. Uh, if you're not a big fan of Amazon, uh, we also have them available on our website, which to be honest, we kind of prefer because Amazon always takes their cut. If you did manage to get one of these in the Kickstarter or you've got one already and um, feel kind enough to leave us a review on Amazon, that'd be awesome. It helps us out a lot. Okay, back to the BattleBot. Now, before we get to how I got here, let's start at the beginning. All right, as much as I'd like to tell you this is the first design and I'm ready to put it together and see how it works, if you look at Fusion, it's more like version 375. Um, but this is actually a good opportunity to talk about design methodology and at least the way I like to work. Let me, uh, let me get my box of shame here and it'll illustrate the point a little more clearly. Yeah, I may have a problem. This may look like a cry for help, but I promise there's a methodology here. At least for me and the way I like to design things, I can only go so far in CAD before I really need to build something and have it in my hands to see how it works. That's kind of how I ended up here. Now, I know there are plenty of engineers out there that can design in CAD all the way up until a finished product, get it produced, and it works the first time. Uh, I am envious of those people. I'm just not one of them. So this is how I got here. But let's look at the evolution a little bit of this design and see how we got there. And it'll give us a chance to talk about kind of what we're building here. All right, before we take a look at these parts in front of you, let's talk for a second about what we're building. If you've seen BattleBots in the past, you know most people employ one of three or four different weapons. There's wedges and drum spinners and flippers and that type of thing. This is something a little different. It's called a ring spinner. It's similar to a full body spinner, except instead of the whole body spinning, it's just the ring on the outside. Pretty basic. But the inspiration for this particular one is a little different. This is an end mill, it's a roughing end mill, and this particular one has a bunch of carbide inserts. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. All these little pockets here are gonna hold some carbide inserts. And the idea is instead of taking one big hit on the other opponent that's just as likely to break me as it is them, it's gonna take lots of little chunks out of them, similar to the way an end mill takes out aluminum. To get where we are today, Let's take a look back at where we started. So my original idea and sort of design philosophy on this that I think has stuck through the end is to make everything as simple and compact as possible. This isn't necessarily intuitive. Uh, you see a lot of big bots and you think, you know, big robot, scary, it, it's gonna do more damage. But this actually has the opposite design philosophy. I wanna make the smallest bot possible that still weighs 12 pounds. And the idea there is that if it's smaller, I can have it more dense. I can have more armor, more aluminum, you know, more structure to the thing. Uh, now to get there is tricky because you really have to integrate everything. It has to be a really tight package, uh, which is why I started here. You can see I've got a, a brushless motor here. My hope was that I could direct drive brushless motors for the drive mechanism. It was originally gonna have a dome on it, only one big bearing and a small bearing up top. Uh, and it was gonna be a full body spinner. After doing a few tests with this guy, uh, yes, the motors have plenty of power to drive, but it wasn't controllable at all. So I had to scrap that. Along the way, I started learning a little bit more about the locomotion and how I wanted it to work. Uh, you see we've got some tiny omnidirectional uh, bearings here. These were gonna sit on the surface and the two wheels on the outside were gonna drive. Omnidirectional wheels will let you turn around and still get some support. It's a good idea, but I started worrying about these plastic parts and whether they were gonna fall off. Anything that falls off your bot during a battle kind of goes points against you, so that was out as well. Now the whole time I'm looking at 
one big advantage. And it's something I haven't seen most people do, and I'm not sure why, maybe I'll find out the day of. But you see here, we got four magnets. And these are strong magnets. Uh, in fact, if you can effectively make your bot heavier than the other bot, that's a huge, huge advantage. So uh, I really wanted to stick with this design and it manages to stay around in the end. So hopefully that works out. As we start getting a little bit closer to the refined chassis here, uh, I started to realize some things were gonna have to happen. The components in this thing are so tightly packed, there wasn't even room for the wiring. So I had to develop a motherboard that sits in here that takes care of most of the wiring of the bot. It's compact, it's reliable, and honestly, building circuit boards is something I've wanted to do for a long time, and it's not too complicated these days. So that's where I ended up with this. By the time I got here, I was feeling pretty good. This thing was solid, but there was one big problem. This was designed as a 15 pound bot. Now, long story short, this category was 15 pounds. Uh, in fact, out of all the years I've been going to Maker Faire, this was a 15 pound category. The problem is in the rest of the United States, hobby weight is 12 pounds. Uh, for some reason, Orlando was always the one that did 15 pound bots and they decided to change the rules to be compliant with all the other competitions going around. So they made it a 12 pound bot, which would be honestly all fine and dandy, except for the fact that they didn't change the rules they didn't change the advertising. Everything still says 15 pounds. The only way I knew it was 12 pounds was I have a friend that also competes in BattleBots and he told me, no, no, Hobby Weight is a 12 pound. They're changing it to 12 pound. They've read it on some Facebook post. So yeah, short story long, um, it's a 12 pound bot now, which is where this design starts to come in. You can see it's very similar to the previous plate, but I've had to remove a ton of material, sort of skeletonize the whole thing. And we started to get closer and closer to the final design. Let's look at some of the components we're using. All right, here's our drive assembly. Uh, you've got a brushless motor. This is a 3530, takes about uh, 30 amps to run. These things are crazy powerful for their size. This attaches to a 19 to one gearbox. This comes from a stepper motor gearbox. Not really designed for high speed, but we'll see how it goes. So far I've punished it pretty good and it seems to be holding up fine. And then the main wheels here are from Bainbot. Uh, really like this company. They are really affordable and uh, good fast shipping too. These are the softest durometer they offer. Uh, all that's been driven by a car ESC. These are specifically for cars because they go forward and reverse and they have brake, which is perfect for what we're looking for. And that sort of brings us to one of the problems with doing it this way. Um, most people run DC motors for their locomotion because they've got a much more linear torque curve. They start up nice and smooth. Going forward to reverse is very smooth where on these ESCs, you almost have to shift into reverse. It has to stop completely before it starts driving the motor the other way. So there are some challenges here. Uh, I'm trying to overcome it by putting it through a big gearbox. Uh, 19 to one means that any sort of sudden jerk start up here on these wheels doesn't, uh, doesn't affect the driving too much. And the main reason I'm going with this is honestly just power to size or power to weight ratio. There just isn't room or weight in my bot for anything else. And I think it's gonna work fine. Speaking of power, this is a 2200 milliamp 3S battery capable of 120 C. 2200 milliamp is the capacity. Well, sort of. 2200 milliamp multiplied by the voltage gives you watt hours, which is really the capacity of a battery, but that's beside the point. 120 C is also sort of a goofy measurement. Uh, that is amps. If you were to multiply 120 times the milliamp hour rating in amp hours, not milliamp hours. So that's 2.2 times 120. That's how many amps this thing can put out at one time, which is actually kind of a ridiculous amount of power. And we're going to need it because this is our weapon motor. This is a prop drive 50 by 50 brushless motor. The 50 by 50 is the dimensions in millimeters. So 50 millimeters in diameter, 50 millimeters tall. And it might not look like much, but this thing can take 2000 Watts of power, which puts it at about two and a half horsepower for this size motor. That's kind of ridiculous. Now, to be honest, I'm not going to be putting 2000 Watts to this motor. Uh, it's designed for six cell batteries and the whole uh, drivetrain and power supply on the bot only runs at three cell. 
which means this will be closer to about a horsepower. But for this size bot, that is still going to be plenty. And to get the power to this motor, we need to build one of these. This is a circuit board that I designed. It's actually the first circuit board I've ever designed from scratch. I think it came out pretty good. It serves as a power distribution board uh, for all of the motors, as well as handling the data lines for the uh, receiver and transmitter. So uh, pretty compact, should be very reliable. Uh, it also handles the on-off switch that we uh, have to activate from outside the bot safely. So that's what these two things are for. But uh, yeah, let's put it together and uh, see what it looks like. I think that is going to do it for this episode. If you guys are interested in watching our 3D printed prototype go from this to this, stick around. Maybe hit that subscribe button. All right, see you guys later.